Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt. Do you know how many M855 it takes to get through polyethylene? I think this is about to be a fun video today, channeling my inner Mr. Hootie Who. We have some ultra high molecular weight polyethylene from Adept Armor. This is actually the same backing material that they use in their Colossus body armor plate. And similarly enough, this is the common material that a lot of body armor manufacturers use in their body armor. What we've known from our testing is that this stuff is really good at stopping speed, but when you introduce hardened penetrators such as M855, M855A1, most level three plates fail against those rounds because this material cannot stop hardened steel. So for our test today, they're going to be very similar to what Edwin and Demo Ranch does when they stack a whole bunch of one particular item in a row to see how many it takes to stop a bullet. This particular panel is right around one half of an inch thick and weighs one pound. We have eight of them. We're gonna be at about 15 feet because we don't need to be at 45 feet. And I wanna make sure I hit all the spots in this today. We have our Pro Chrono Pal Digital DLX at about 12 feet. We're gonna shoot at zero degrees because that represents worst case scenario. We have various different types of threats that we're gonna shoot at this from M855, M855A1, M2 armor piercing, possibly some M993, depending on how many of these that we have left. And we'll go from there. It's around 40 to 45 degrees outside today. It's winter, but I got my waterproof boots and my wool socks on, so my feet are warm. We'll put a giant spreadsheet here at the beginning that we're gonna foreshadow all the threats that we're gonna shoot at it. And then we'll mark you know, the completions and velocities as we collect them. We are going to use our giant clay briefcase just as a large backer so that these panels are not flying everywhere when we do this test. So I've gone ahead and labeled all the panels one through eight. I figured we're gonna take five shots on panel number one, and we'll go down and see how many different panels that these particular rounds penetrated through, and we'll cycle through the panels until we run out. I have some very you know, interesting threats that I think are valid against our pure polyethylene. The first of which is M855A1, that is the Army's current issue ball round. It's 62 grains, has a copper core with a large hard arrowhead steel tip. Now, this one's special because I've loaded it to be subsonic. Typically, out of a 16-inch barrel, you're looking at 3,000 feet per second. I loaded this one to be right around 1,000 feet per second. We have a 10.5-inch SBR with a Turbo 556 can on here. Hopefully my offsets at this close of a distance are gonna be good for the subsonic round. If not, there might be some swearing. So this one I'm gonna to try to place the upper left of the plate. 1144, so we were just about 30 feet per second supersonic on that, but it's still a reduced velocity. Continuing with our reduced velocity loads, we have another current issue round from the US military. This is M80A1, 130 grain projectile, copper core, hardened steel penetrator, pretty much you know, just like M855A1, but in our 308 caliber. I've read that the 6.8 by 51 caliber new military round uses a very similar, similarly designed projectile. We've got a 16 inch CZ 557 Urban Counter Sniper. Got the JK Armament Rifle Kit up front. This should be on the right side of the plate. Nine sixteen, indeed subsonic. I use Trail Boss to make a lot of these subsonic loads, and I haven't been able to get that powder in almost two years now. So if if anybody has a line on some, let me know. And now we brought out the Armor Slayer. This is our twenty-two inch TC Compass Turbo Five Five Six up front, silver line, sixteen power primary arm scope up top. We've got our full power M eight five five or SS one hundred nine. That is a sixty-two grain. Penetrating round, lead core, conical steel tip. I always try to throw a macro if I have them of what the core looks like or the bullet looks like itself, so you got a little better description than what you can see here. Then we have our M855A1. This should represent the maximum barrel length or maximum velocity that you usually would obtain from this. 
They're down a little bit because it's 45 degrees outside today, but we're still getting pretty good velocities. So the M855 first. Thirty fifty one and our M eight five five A one. Pretty good velocity off that. And for our fifth shot, we've brought out our M two armor piercing. That is the NIJ level four or upcoming RF three threat. It is in World War II bullet. Kind of hard to believe that's what the threat profile is, but it is. 162, 165 grain full metal jacket with a very long hardened steel core. Now I don't have the 300 wind chat out today because we actually took it to the local gunsmith so we could bed a Boyd stock in. So we've got the Savage Access 110 tactical left hand eject, Crimson Trace, hardline pro scope on here, our JK armament rifle kit up front. We should see very close to spec with this particular loading. This one's gonna be right dead center of our plate. Maybe get it lined up here. Twenty-seven seventy-five, so we're one hundred feet per second slow, but still good velocity. This should be easy enough to see, and hopefully we have enough of these panels we can shoot some more threats. But here is our subsonic M eight five five A one. Here is our subsonic M eighty A one. Here was our full power M eight five five. And here was our full power M855A1 and our close to spec M2AP. It should be no surprise that all of them penetrated panel one. But look at that. There's our subsonic M855A1 and M80A1 both sticking out of there. Here's panel number two. Oh, panel number three, looks like M2AP still going and M855A1. So M855A1 was stopped in panel number three, but our M2AP is still going. Still going, panel number five, still going, six. Seven. Ho! Oh, it took seven panels to stop our M2AP, and that was at 100 feet per second below spec. I have to imagine that above at actual spec, we probably would poke through all eight of those panels. We've got our panels rearranged, and we're back to our 30 cal with some very interesting threats. We've got M80A1, again, that's the Army's current issue ball round. We've got M14A1, that is an armor piercing incendiary round, originally in 30 out 6. We've got it loaded in 308. Then we have M993, that is the Army's current issue armor piercing round, 130 grains with a tungsten penetrator core. Very, very nasty. In the past, it's taken a top end ceramic plate to stop this. Probably a waste of ammo on this, but I'm very curious on if this amount of thickness can stop it. M993 will be third, the API will be second, and the M80A1 will be first. We've got a 16 inch still here. So we're gonna lose a little bit of velocity here, but you know, this is, you know, 100, 100 yard engagement, give or take. So this should be the top right corner okay and now our api mr flashy flash i love this stuff smoke to strap there Sorry if there's any camera interruptions, we may have been on B-roll here, but this is our M993. This should be in the lower right-hand corner. Nice. 
Let's go see what we did. So much fire, so satisfying. Hopefully the flash from the API was cool to watch on camera, but it's interesting that it actually separated plate number one. So here was the API, here was the full power M80A1, and here was our M993. We may have one more or two more spots left for some shots here in a second. Depending on what these did, this is just kind of all fun science. I'm just trying to see how tough polyethylene is, mainly because there's some plates coming out or being r and d that are rumored to be like three pounds and made from a type of polyethylene or some new type of material that can stop some of these rounds going full velocity, which is interesting to me. So here's panel number one. Should be no surprise that we have penetrations on all three rounds from panel number one. Here's panel number two. Panel number three, still getting penetrations. Panel number four, five. Oh, there's our API. So API was stopped in panel number five, but our M80A1 and M993 Oh, M80A1 was stopped in the sixth panel, but our M993 just continued on. Not sure if you guys can see that. Yeah, you can see that little hole there. Very interesting. It would be curious to know how many panels it would take to stop that, and would it be double this, 16? Now, if I had the ability to cut these in half, we could have done that up but I wanted to make sure that if we imparted any energy on this, that there was su sufficient amount of space for it to disperse that. So this particular size panel seems to work pretty good for five shots. But M993, no joke, tungsten, very, very hard to stop. Have I mentioned multiple times in the video that I love M14A1 API? Look what it did to this particular plate. It's all burnt inside. That is just awesome. I figured we could close this demo out with a little more destruction on these panels. We brought back out our 556 by 45 millimeter TC compass and I have three 57 threats, you know, 57 by 28 millimeter, but they're loaded in 556 cases. So these are gonna be velocities well outside of anything 57 could obtain. We have SS 190, 31 grain, aluminum core with a conical steel penetrator. I think it's the identical penetrator to SS-109. We have our 40 grain pre-fragmented projectile hardened copper from Elite Ammunition, as well as their T6B, that's a 28 grain, very similar little bullet. We're gonna take the T6B third, the 40 grain second, then the SS-190 first. I think these should all be around 3,700 feet per second. This one's gonna be in the middle of the plate towards the top. 35, 37, a little on the slow side. Here's our 40 grain. 34, 29. Oh, that was a horrible velocity on that. I think those were some pre-production loadings. Easy enough to read. 190, our 40 grain, and our T6B. Anybody want to place bets that these didn't make it through the first panel? Place those bets in the comments below. <laughs> well, our SS190 did, folks. But our 40 grain and our T6B stood no chance. There is a little bit of a dimpling there, so it was trying. So number two for SS190, and that's it. What happens with that particular bullet design is the base is not enclosed. So as it penetrates, it pretty much forces the penetrating cone and the aluminum core out the back and kind of limits its penetration. 
so it was able to penetrate one panel and caught in the second and i think with that being said we've tortured these panels enough we're gonna have to get some more from adept and see perhaps how many it would take to stop 50 bmg well everyone i hope you had as much fun as i did with this little quote unquote science experiment slash demonstration out here at the range it's always interesting to see how far our subsonic bullets can penetrate into ultra high molecular molecular weight polyethylene as always m993 never disappoints when it comes to penetrating crap out of materials our m2 ap even at 100 feet per second slower than spec did very very well against against this material it took almost the full eight panels to stop that penetrator mainly because what has to happen is you either have to break up that core or you have to cause it to you know either yaw or tumble in its flight path and then the polyethylene behind it can actually catch it and slow it down now i'm going to get a little bit of a contest going we'll have to think of a prize but drop a comment below on how many of these panels at one half inch thick and one pound eight by eight squares it will take to stop 50 bmg We'll cap it at M33 ball, which is the standard full metal jack with a mild steel core and M2 armor piercing, depending on how many of these panels we can get. I'll have to come up with a prize, but like I said, drop a comment below. And when I have the ability to get some more of these from Adept, we will do a follow-up video with our bear M107A1. Now we may be at a little bit of a distance when we shoot that, but I think that would be a very interesting test as well. With all that being said, it's time for me to get the heck out of here. But at the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible. Number one is my Patreon and subscribe star fans. I have a link tree in the description below with various different ways to contact me or support me through affiliate links. I did start syncing my channel over to Rumble. So if you guys don't want to support me here, on YouTube, Rumble is an alternative open source, or not open source, but an alternative video playing location you can watch my content. Number two is Jake over at Adept Armor who in full transparency provided me with those tiles with no strings attached to do with as I please. I do have an affiliate code set up with them so if you were looking at their Colossus plate or they even have a new plate, I think it's called the Thunder Plate, it's a RF2 plate at three pounds rated to stop, yes, M855, and it's only three pounds. I do believe that discount code is Buffman, and essentially that saves you 5%, and then there is a kickback to me that helps me procure and purchase more things for me to use out here at the range. And of course, number three is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range.